Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Scrapman, and I'm bringing you another episode of Trail Makers. And today we are going to be doing something like we've never done before, and that is to build an AI hovercraft or something like that. I don't know, but the idea is that I want to build something that will hover at a fixed point above the ground automatically and go forward and hopefully avoid any potential obstacles. Now, this is obviously gonna involve the new logic and sensors update, and I can think of really simple but clumsy ways to do it, and then I can imagine more complicated ways to do it that might be out of my logic know-how, but it doesn't mean we can't try. So we're gonna start off with the basics and just let's see if we can make something that can hover on its own and stay at a fixed height. Now, Trailmakers has this amazing thing called a gimbal jet. And this is perfect for a hovercraft because this automatically applies upwards and only upwards force. So it's really easy to keep something stable hovering rather than having it tilt and then the force pushes it off to the side like you would with a normal thruster. So I think we're gonna build an actual seatless vehicle. Like it's not going to have a seat on it because it's going to be AI controlled. So the good thing is we can't, I wasn't sure about this, but we can adjust the power of the gimbals. I was wondering, depending on how light our craft was, how many or how few gimbals we were going to need, but we're going to have, we're going to be able to fine tune that. So that's excellent. So we're going to start building the basic outline of our craft. I'm not sure what the optimal shape is going to be, but basically we're going to need something that we can easily put in a bunch of logic gates if we need to. So I think a box a boxy shape might be the best to start off with. And then if we get something that actually works, then we can make it more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've actually built this, this simple design here that could potentially work somewhat sloppily. So the way I have this designed, I need to equalize the, um, oh, I actually need to add something else to it, one more thing. But I need to equalize the buoyancy of it first to get it to actually hover at a certain point. I need it because I, I couldn't do that until I added all the logic and sensors I realized because that's going to change the weight, which is then going to change uh, how powerful the gimbals need to be, which is just going to make it pointless to make it hover first. So we need to figure out what we needed to put on it first. And I think I've got everything. So it is by default on forward. So these are going to keep pushing it forward. These thrusters in the back here. Now you can see these two sensors that are on by default. When one of those sensors, or both of them, detect something, you'll notice that the uh, back thrusters turn off. That is so it can slow down, hopefully, before it hits something. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't think of an efficient way to um, also make it so that when these turn off, then something else would turn on because there's no not gate. But I know that there's a logic way that you can make those. I just, I'm just don't know them off the top of my head. So instead, uh, we have right next to them, we have these other sensors, which when they go on, you can see that it will activate that mini thruster on the left side to turn it away from the wall. And when this one goes on, it'll activate this other mini thruster on this side to hopefully turn it away from the wall. And I can't really test this out right now, but I think I have it hooked up so that if both of these sensors get activated at the same time, I also have these front thrusters turn on, so it'll hopefully back away to a point where it can not do that anymore. But I can see it getting stuck where it's gonna back away, go forward, back away, go forward, and it's just gonna be stuck there. So that's a potential flaw with that system. But like I said, I don't really know logic that well. I pretty much alert, teach myself everything from the beginning every single time I start, and then I forget it all immediately after I build the thing. So then when I start over, I have to remember how logic works again. But uh, let's get this thing neutrally, neutrally buoyant and see how it works. All right, so here's what I got so far. It seems to actually hover, which is awesome. So when the sensor, so all of the uh, four corner gimbals are on by default. And then when the sensor activates, it actually activates the middle one to get it going back up in the air. So it is slightly negatively buoyant by default. And then once it gets too low, that middle one just gives it that little extra boost. However, it seems like it's going a little bit too much. And I and um, if I go any higher on the strength of these, it's too much strength. So the way to counteract that is making it a lot heavier. So that way we can fine tune the buoyancy point a little bit more. So I'm going to add uh, some weights to each of these legs here. I'm actually going to take these off and replace them with the weights. And we're going to see how that does for us. All right, so this should be way too heavy. And as you can see, it definitely is. So we're not really gonna adjust so much the strength of this middle one. We want to adjust uh, these to be as neutral as possible, but while still being slightly negative. 
So we're at 0. 0.4, so we're just going to go up one tick at a time. So 0. 0.5, clearly not enough. We've added 120 kilograms to this thing, so that's not light. 0. 0.6, clearly not enough. Actually, hold on. I feel like we're getting close with 0. 0.6. Hopefully 0. 0.7 isn't too much, because once we get to the point where it's too much, then there's not much we can do about that. Okay, I think that might be almost good. Here, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna turn this one off. Oh, negative. That's interesting. We could have negative power. Hmm. I did not know that about the gimbal ditch until this now. All right, well, let's see. How are we at? So that's pretty neutral. So if we go up without the help of the middle one, then that means we have too much power. Oh, that is so good right there. So I'm just going to confirm that this is probably the best uh, value right here. I'm predicting that this is going to make us go up. And yep, that makes us go up. So point, was it point 0.8 was the better value? Yeah, so point 0.8 seems to be the better value. So now we need to figure out what's the minimum num amount of thrust we need to cancel out the negative buoyancy into positive buoyancy. All right, so, oh, whoa, whoa. That's amazing. That's so good. Now, will it turn away from that? Okay, I think we need to make our, um, oh, it's, it is actually kind of turning away from that. I think, oh, I don't know if my logic is working correctly. I actually don't know if my logic is working correctly or not. Let's see, if it sees me here, it should turn that way. Okay, if it sees me over here, will you see me? Can you not see me? See me, see me, look at me. There you go, now it should turn the other way. It's too low. It can only see my shoulders or above. It can't see my legs. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Maybe one more tick of power for the middle thruster. Let's do that. All right, point two. It should give it a little bit more upwards force. See, but now it's like, now it's like too much. It's hovering too high now. And it's going to keep going up and down like that a lot. And see, now it's going like all the way back down to the ground. And it's going to go all the way back up. Well, this should help it turn. All right, you know what I need to do? Clearly, the turning thrust is not strong enough. The turning mini thrusters, I'm just going to power them up by a decent amount, so it'll basically turn faster. Now, the only downside I'm seeing right now is we can turn, but I don't have any system to stop the turn. Like, it'll stop thrusting, but because it's a hovercraft, once you initiate the turn, it's going to retain that momentum and probably keep spinning if I make it too powerful. So I, I want to make it just enough to turn out of the way but I don't want to make it so much that it's going to spin around and not stop. So I'm just going to go like up to 0.3 and we're going to see how that feels. All right, so it's definitely turning that way and now it's definitely turning that way. So let's go ahead and turn this gimbal jet back up to, I guess, 0.2, even though that's a little bit too much for my liking. And now it should just go straight, very, very slowly until it hits something, which actually let's make it uh, potentially hit me here. Eh, I, this is actually harder than I thought. Yeah, so then when it hits me, eh, wait, is it not? I think something might be broken here. I need to put something in front of this thing. It's just going. Oh, you know what's really not good? What's really not, we need to put some, I think we need to put some wings on this thing because if it drifts sideways, it's not gonna detect a wall that it's gonna hit sideways. Although we could add some sensors that help it. Hmm. We could add some sensors that help it. <gasps> you know what? We could do that. With logic gates, you know what we can do? We can make it so that if a side logic gate is active, both of these mini thrusters will activate, actually strafing it away from the wall. And then same thing for this side. So we can have these thrusters activate under separate conditions. All right, so let's test if this works. So if this, if this sensor detects me, these two thrusters on this side should activate. It's actually really hard to see. It's too tall now, but it looks like it's happening. I did, it's just like the little tiniest like pulse of thrust, but yeah, I can see it happening. All right, that's working. So now it should strafe back and forth if that happens. But the next thing I want to try now is um, I want to put some wings on this thing just so that it's not going to drift sideways so much and hopefully it'll be able to stay on like a more straight trajectory as it turns. All right, so we should have something now, and I'm actually going to turn it into this wall, and we're going to see what it does. Oh, is it too heavy now with the, uh, with the additions? It might be a little bit too heavy with the additions. Let's see what happens. All right, you can see it trying to turn. It doesn't really know what to do. 
The back thrust is off. Both of these sensors are active, which means it's trying to back away from the wall. And now it's actually turned. Look at that. It worked. It just turned away from the wall. That's awesome. Okay, but now it's in like, it's in a constant turn, which I don't know if there's anything that we can do about that. All right, I'm gonna make it, um, I'm gonna make it hover a little bit higher. We're gonna delete these legs now. And we're just gonna see how it does with a little bit more room. And then we're gonna send it, uh, this way, not off the cliff. All right, go ahead. Get out of here. Go. Go. It's like barely strong enough to lift off up the ground, lift up off the ground. All right, what's gonna happen when it gets to this? Are the thrusters even gonna activate? Ooh, the problem now is, so with thrust, ooh, it's not gonna be nearly close enough. The problem with thrust too is when it's constantly on like that, you're gonna keep gaining momentum. You're just gonna keep going faster and faster until you hit something. There's no like, you can't set a designated speed, unfortunately. Um, if we had a speedometer, like an actual speedometer detector, that'd be amazing because then we could say once it reaches a max speed, the thrust will turn off. So then it'll just kind of like try to keep going at that speed. It's gained too much momentum in one direction and it's not going fast enough for the tail fins to really help that much. Cause that's the really difficult thing about hovercraft is there's no friction. So they're just sliding all over the place. So I'm gonna do an experiment here. Well, I'm gonna save this thing first, but I'm gonna do an experiment. I'm gonna turn up the uh, front and back thrust just to give it a little bit more speed. That way it'll actually get places a little bit more quickly, but the cost is that it's also gonna crash a little bit more quickly. So we'll put it from 0.1 to 0.3. And now we should see a big increase in something. Oh no, why are you going that way? Don't do that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, here it goes. We're just gonna, let's just watch it. I mean, it's supposed to be an AI thing, so. Whoa! What was that? What is happening with that? How did it bounce up so high? All right, it's trying to stabilize. It doesn't know what to do though. It's reading the ground and it's not reading the ground. That's not what the sensors are supposed to be picking up. All right, let's reset you here. All right. Oh boy, you're going too fast. You're gonna hit that wall. What's he gonna do here? Oh, you can see all the thrusters starting to activate. He's trying to fit. He's trying to figure out where he is, but he has walls on both sides. So he can't really strafe one side to another. But look at that, he went through a tunnel. He went through here and he navigated through to the other side. Where are you gonna go now? Do sensors pick up water? I don't know if sensors actually pick up water. Oh, you're going fast. You're picking up some speed now. Oh no, too much speed. Stop, stop, stop. Why are you turning? I don't even know why you're turning. Oops. Okay. All right, yeah, get away from that rock. Get away from the rock. All right, now he just wants to go forward again. But see, it, because, because of the no friction with the uh, turning, once he turns in one direction, he's just going to keep floating in that direction. And I'm not sure... I'm not sure the best way to counter that. I know there's... I could probably do some more complicated logic system where after he turns and then the sensor reactivates, it'll then, for a certain time period, activate the opposing thruster to straighten it back out and auto-correct it. But that was... That's way over my head. But I can imagine that working. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do some challenges with this thing on various parts of the map. I'm gonna save this thing as it is right now. Then we're gonna go, we're gonna go to that big tunnel, the big long tunnel, and we're gonna set it in the tunnel, but I'm gonna try to set it at a little bit of an angle so it's just not gonna go straight through and see if it can navigate away from the walls. And we're just gonna test it out. We're just gonna put it to some tests and see how it does. Cause in a big open area like this, there's not a whole lot for it to pick up on. So it just kind of goes aimlessly. All right, well, here it goes. Um, this is a little bit straighter than I wanted to send it into the tunnel, but I can only turn it by 90 degree increments. So we're just gonna see what it does. Okay, it's just gonna hover against the ground, I guess. Okay, now it's turning off to the left side. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen here? Oh, it turned around. This thing is not... <laughs> hey, I made it through the tunnel now. I don't... <laughs> this is a stupid AI. This is an artificial, not very intelligence. I made, I made an artificial idiot. Uh, that's what I've made. An ar artificial idiot right here. I mean, I can't call I can't call it a complete idiot. It made it through the tunnel, which is all they really wanted it to do, to be honest. Gonna start detecting a lot over here. 
He's going to want to go backwards. So you can see the front thrusters are working. Now the back thrusters are working. And he's going to turn left in a second. There he goes. Turns left. Now he's trying to strafe away from the wall. All of the controls are being tested here now. That's excellent. So he totally strafed himself away from that wall. Now he's going straight. He's at... Oh, he hit the ground a little bit. But he's actually kind of going straight. This is the best he's done so far. Oh, now we're going to find out. Does water... Does water trigger sensors? He's going to fall down kind of fast here, though. Why is he turning? Where are you going? I don't know what to expect. Oh. And he sunk. Okay, so all that's left to do now is I'm going to try to add some aerodynamic and aesthetic parts to this thing to make it look like not just a box. And we're going to see... Uh, we're just going to make it look better. And I'm going to try to think aerodynamically. Like, I'm going to try to make it so that forward is clearly defined by the shape of it. And we're going to see if that helps at all. But if these, um, if these tail wings don't do, don't seem to have any effect on its ability to stay straight and not spin around infinitely, then I don't think any amount of aerodynamics is going to help because it's going at such a slow speed. So there's not a whole lot of wind resistance in the first place. But we'll see how it looks by the end of this. And of course, the weight's going to get all thrown off now too. So we're going to have to adjust for that as well but uh, i'll see you when we get there all right ladies and gentlemen i finished the aesthetics of it obviously it's way heavier than it used to be so we're gonna have to fine tune the hovering stuff all over again but um actually i hope we even can because those things are at 0.8 out of one power we might need to add some more eh. I'm gonna need to add some more uh, gimbals to this, but I'm actually, I'm really digging the design of this. Let me know what you guys think of this design, but let's see if we can get it to fly anymore. Um, does it fly any better? I'm, I'm worried that the weight distribution is gonna be way off now, but we'll figure out what happens. So all we can really do, I'm just gonna put these up to max. Oh, I can't hardly even see them anymore. We're gonna put these ones up to max and we're gonna see if this helps us. Oh, that's not bad. Nice, yes, that's good. That is good. All right, hold on. Before it gets away from us, let's save it now. All right, and then we're going to have it fly back into the mountain just to see if it has any better of a reaction time or anything like that. But I'm actually really surprised that this thing can even get off the ground. With all that weight that I've added onto it, I really didn't expect anything. Oh, that is not heading towards anywhere useful. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, come back. Come back. All right, there we go. Head right into the mountain. I'm sorry, little guy, but uh, I just, I, I just want to see what you do. I just want to see what you do. But, uh, yeah, I love the way this thing looks now. It is, it seems fast. Does it seem faster to you? You know what? It might be because of the air. Yeah, the, I put a lot of aerodynamics on it, so it probably picks up speed a lot faster. It's just going to slam into this rock. It's going way too fast. Ow. All right, now it's going to back up. It's definitely going to back up. Okay. And now it should turn to the left here. It should strafe itself away from the wall. There we go. Okay. Well, that didn't seem too bad. I mean, it just, it picks up too much speed because the thrusters don't know when to stop if there's nothing in front of it. They just keep going pretty much. Look how fast this thing's going. Like, this is a decent amount of speed here. Oh, no. It's, it's really not, like, it's really not an artificial intelligence. It bumps into walls and then it reacts pretty much. So it's like, it's, it's like the worst artificial intelligence thing, but it has the programming it needs to, to get out of sticky situations like this right here. I'm hoping, all right, now it's stuck. Now it's stuck. Let's see what it does. All right, you can see it's strafing to the right. Now it's not sure what to do. It's probably gonna back up now. It should be backing up. The ones, the thrusters in front should be activating. All right. Well, would you look at that? It found itself trapped in a corner and it decided it likes this pillar better. <laughs> what it got out of the corner, that's the point, right? And I, oh, I love the way it looks. I really do like the way it looks. I'm really proud of that design. I mean, I, I just had a box to begin with and um, just putting things on it made it look a lot better. And here it goes. It's, it's navigated itself away from the sticky situation. It's like, here's a wide open plane. I can run free. Run free, little hovercraft. Run free. Get a chicken while you're at it. That would be hilarious if it, would actually, if it actually hit a chicken and killed it. But it uh, looks like it's just gonna, it's probably gonna fall in the water now, unfortunately. Yeah, or is it gonna clear it? Look at that, that looks pretty cool. Imagine if it made it onto the land bridge, onto that bridge over there. Oh, nope, not high enough. Not high enough. 
But yeah, uh, I don't think the sensors detect water, which is kind of good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it going to make it over? Is it going to... Nope, nope. All right, it drowned. I think we should probably call it quits for that guy right there. Well, let me know what you thought of it uh, and give me suggestions for future episodes. What do you want to see me try to do next? Let's stay away from the AI stuff because to be quite honest, I'm just not that... I'm not good enough at logic to really do good AI. I could just do simple, stupid AI like this. But if you have ideas for other cool concepts or things, like just let me know what you want to see. And uh, if it sounds like a good idea or if enough people suggest it, I'll give it a try in Trail Makers. So if you're not subscribed, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.